Welcome to Beyond the Cards. This is Allison DiNicola, and it's my extreme pleasure today to welcome two of my favorite ladies, uh, creators, uh, Lisa Hahn and Lynn Arujo. Um, I'm going to introduce them a little bit, but we're really here today. We're going to be talking about Pastoral Tarot, their new um, tarot deck, which is so incredible. Um, and I'm going to leave that there, let, leave that hanging in the balance for a moment. And I'm just going to briefly introduce them. Lisa, who is an incredible uh, illustrator, artist, lives in Boca Raton, Florida, and she's been working on decks since 1995. So she's she's been doing this. It's been her work for a good amount of time. Um, she is the artist and creator of the Shapeshifter Tarot, the Celtic Dragon Tarot, Animals Divine Tarot, Fantastical Creatures Tarot, Fairy Tale Tarot. All of these are like so many of my favorite titles. Ghosts and Spirits, which was yesterday. We're, we're, we're doing this on November 1st. So we had Yay. Halloween, uh, Winged Enchantment Oracle, the Fairy Tale Lenormand, and their, her latest um, pastoral tarot uh, created with Lynn. And now I'm just going to introduce you briefly, Lynn. Um, who Lynn has been with US Games for the past 18 mm -hmm. years. I, we were just marveling at that. Um, she's the director of editorial and communications, and she has written and literally edited, these are my words, hundreds of tarot and oracle decks. Is that not correct? That's true. Yes, that's, that's true. That's true. Uh, inspirational decks, including her uh, creating her own highly successful deck, Botanical Inspirations, which is um, which is out there in the world thriving. So welcome, ladies. So excited to see you. So and great to see both of you. I haven't seen Lisa in so long. We used to talk every day, and that's been a while. Hey. This is really fun. We're, so we're having a, re a reunion here. And I, I really right. wanted to start, um, before we start to really talk about the, the deck that you guys created together, um, I just wanted to talk about, and maybe um, we can start with you, Lynn, how the idea got started. Like, where did this idea come from? Um, you know, how did this, yeah, you know, Yeah. Well, as I mentioned life? in the book, I grew up in upstate New York, and I, I didn't grow, on a, grow up on a farm or anything, but was surrounded by farmland. And then when I moved to Connecticut and, you know, I have friends who live out in the country and everything. I don't know. There's something about that, that pastoral life that just has always spoken to me, that has always drawn me in and just made me feel like, you know, that feeling of like going home, like even though it was never literally your home, but just a place that you feel like is your spot on earth where you're in alignment and you're at peace. And I've just always felt that way about farms every time I pass a barn I just get chills you know and I love farm animals and so I just wanted to create a deck that's sort of in that setting and I knew that I wanted Lisa to illustrate it because some of the projects that you mentioned like Ghosts and Spirits and uh, Winged Enchantment and Fantastical Creatures those are projects that I was working as editor when you know when Lisa um, created those so we, you know, even before we started working together directly, you know, we, we had that connection. And then when she told me that she had grown up in rural, well, you know, small town Connecticut too, we, we had that bond too. So, I mean, even before we started this project, we, we were both on the same page as far as that, you know, that pastoral setting. And that just made it so easy to, um, you know, get into the specifics of, of each card that we wanted to create for this deck. Um, we want, I mean, I'm a big fan of Rider Waite, you know, that's everybody's favorite. So that was sort of our, our point of reference, but we wanted the deck to provide um, a little more context for each card. So, so for example, like the Three of Swords, you know, or, or some of the other cards, it's just sort of a, you know, swords floating around in the air and hands coming out of the clouds we wanted to bring it down to earth we wanted to show context and mood and real life situation organic situations that people you know reading with the deck could relate to so even if you're not like even if the the theme of you know barns and farm animals isn't your thing i think we've provided like i said context um with these scenes that that anybody, even if you even if you've never worked with tarot before, you can understand what this scene means. So I'll, I'll let Lisa talk to us. Yeah. So so Lisa, I know you're you grew up in Connecticut. Is that correct? That's right. 
Awesome. So it's interesting how you guys, um, how these things come together, right? It's like, there's, there's no mistakes. There's always the synchronicities of, you know, right timing. So Lisa, what did you think when Lynn proposed, um, you know, was talking about this project or like, what was your, what was your feeling? What was your, you know, I, you know, ideas. I was thrilled because I have so much respect for Lynn and her accomplishments. So when she asked me to work with her on a deck, it was like, yeah, <laughs> I was really excited about it. And also it was, um, the idea was so different than anything I had done before that I was really intrigued by the prospect of doing something new. And I, since I also connected with um, New England and have similar memories that Lynn has about um country life it just seemed like a good fit at the right time and I was also wanting a challenge something that would push me push uh push me to uh draw new things and uh render things in different ways and get uh, unlike fantasy it's more down to earth and more um it resonates with a lot of memories of childhood and just the beauty of the world. I just wanted to have that opportunity to to work with her on it. So I said yes. <laughs> Didn't take much. I love it. And so you guys, this started, when did the seed of this idea start? I just think that's important for people to kind of have an idea of how how much like heart and soul and time went into the creation of this card deck. Well so least, it was yeah. seven it was seven years ago. <laughs> I mean we worked on the deck for a good five or six years and then of course you know um after it gets turned in it's in a production queue and and I have to give a lot of credit to the designers at, at U.S. Games they put so much extra love into the production of this of this whole set um and then it goes to the printer so there's another year there so it's been a long process but I don't know it's it's it felt like it was it was the right timing, you know. No, I don't think any of us felt like there was any pressure to get it done. It was just like it, it's going to take as long as it takes. I mean, I've learned a lot of patience, you know. But it was interesting at the beginning of the process when Lisa and I were, you know, hashing out the first few cards, you know, ideas for the first few cards. That was definitely a more involved process. And as we went along, like the communication was just, it just you know flowed a little more naturally, like. I'd come up with that idea. She'd give feedback, you know, we'd kind of go from there. She'd sketch, I'd give feedback. And then ultimately, you know, we were, we didn't, we didn't stop until both of us were happy with each and every card. You know, I think like, you know, I might've had an idea that she didn't think would work and she was very honest and it just, you know, a lot of back and forth. And ultimately, I mean, I'm thrilled with every single card in this deck. <laughs> I know I'm it's, you know, for those of you who are watching this visually, um, you know, as on YouTube, uh, it's like, I want, I want to bring the cards out right now. But I just want to ask another question uh, because, because it is so unique and in that it is um, in, in a landscape format, right. In a pastoral format. So it's yeah, not a more vertical. It. Yeah. That was one thing I knew from the get go that right. I wanted it to be full, fully conceived scenes you know that that gave context to me and the cards yeah. and I wanted the details I wanted the mood the greenery the sky everything that's gonna tell you what the story is behind this card that that I knew that I wanted to be landscape and I mean that just seemed like such a perfect fit you know and it wasn't just to be something new and different it was really like I said to give context to make to make an immersive um, experience for the for the readers and so, Lisa, how was that challenging versus the other card decks that you had created that, you know, were more vertical? I mean, like, it's it's a different, um, you know, it's a different, you know, proportion, let's say, for dip, for each of the cards. So was that challenging at all, or did you find that to be easier? No, it was more liberating in a way, because uh, it was, the subject matter was conducive for landscape orientation. And it was just great because I felt like I was painting landscapes. It was very, um, I just loved the switch from vertical. I had been doing vertical art for so long. It was, it was just a nice break. And in some ways enabled me to have put in uh, 
invest more time into details. And I, I felt there was a sense of freedom I hadn't felt before with my other decks. And that's not to say I didn't enjoy my other decks. It was just uh, a whole new feeling that helped me to grow as an artist in the process as well. Well, um, it's just such an amazing um, collaboration. I'll say that because I want to begin to just ask you guys some questions about specific cards that and some some of the art so i know uh, at least you can share some of that with us through the camera um but were, were there any things that were really like a tackle was there something that was really challenging um you know in the creation of this was there like any particular you know archetype or scene or something that really um, was hard to kind of figure out it's it's funny i think one of the very last cards we did was the full card and we had we talked about all kinds of different ideas, and um, you know, of course, we started doing our favorites, and you know, we did them completely in random order, but just mm -hmm. like what you know, when inspiration struck, right? And then we got to the full card, and we were both kind of scratching our heads, like, what can we use for the full card? And we talked about you know all kinds of cliff scenes and this and that, and then I found this picture of my son like walking over a log in the woods, and we're like, there's our full, there, that's it, and we both knew it, and. And we did it. So like all the, you know, the hesitancy at the beginning of like, oh, you know, trying to like come up with an idea when sometimes the idea is right in front of you, you know. And what do you say, Lisa, like from your your point of view, like, was there anything that was like a really challenge or? Uh, well, several. I mean, the deck was challenging overall. Um, it wasn't. I wasn't stagnant at all. I There was a fluidity to the process between Lynn and I that. I mean, it was conducive for um, images just flowing out. But there were this deck required some technical accuracy as far as farm implements and and structures and uh, things like horse anatomy. Um, there were things that were rather intense that I had to take my time with. For example, the the Wheel of Fortune card had a had a, um, a water wheel, right? water wheel and shed and it was really important for me to to get as accurate as possible and um i had to draw all the perspective out and i had to look at all the nuances of the mechanisms i looked i researched it i researched um water wheels from that time period all kinds of things and that was very challenging it was really fun i loved it i loved being um I loved tackling something that was um, out of my comfort zone, but the results were for me fantastic. I was really proud of the, what I was able to be, accomplish. And in this deck, I felt there was a lot of accomplishment involved. There was a lot of feeling as though um, the challenges were, that was part of the fun for me. Um, there were some decks that just took a lot of, I mean, some cards that just took a lot of time. Mm -hmm detailed and 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 um it was not boring at all it was not monotonous at all but sometimes having to draw a lot of leaves or flowers <laughs> just and i i really fell into a trance while doing it i really it was almost like a meditative act and um i i just i it was i i can't say there was anything detrimental in the deck just the challenge was challenges were um inspiring for me and i really appreciate the opportunity to do that and to explore these realms that were be unfamiliar to me i didn't realize i was to do this so i can I, can i just um add a little bit here first I, I really need to just give Lisa kudos. I mean, I knew that she could, I mean, I picked her because she could, I knew she could draw animals. She could draw nature. She could draw greenery and people's expression. I knew that she had those skills, but then, you know, we, like you said, there were so many added challenges, like figuring out the engineering of a water wheel or, or a piece of farm equipment or something. I mean, we had to do a lot of research, but ultimately it was Lisa who had to render these things. And it was just amazing what, what she was able to do. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's so incredible, yeah. right? Do you think that people don't um, like, you know, fully get the gist of that when you're creating something like this? How much um, learning goes into it? Um, I mean, I find from the things I've worked on, like I 
have yeah. done so much research on different things that I'm like, wow, I have to learn all of this first before I can it's be great, interpretive yeah. about it. But yeah. it's exciting. It's like, it's like you're never, you're always in school. <laughs> like, it is, it's like you're it is. a lifetime it learner. Is. It's funny yeah. because like, you know, I would have an idea and I would picture it in my head and then I describe it to Lisa and she would draw. But sometimes because I don't have an art background, I don't understand perspective. So I'd say, oh, just show the, per- show the person in the corn maze. And they're like, well, you wouldn't really be able to see them. <laughs> So Lisa, you know, had to like that was one of the challenging <laughs> ones. <laughs> Show like, maybe you know the yeah. lady in front of the the schoolhouse. It was so funny. <laughs> oh, um, you, but also the fact this oh, was yeah. a historic. This is this is meant to be um, like Depression era. So that added a whole nother layer of you know trying to get the details right, trying to get them accurate for that time frame. So. Um, Awesome. We had fun researching that. I mean, the clothes, the shoes, you know, the couturements, everything. I love it. So are you, um, can you share some of the cards with us? Give us your, uh, maybe your favorites, your favorite picks or, you know, whatever turned out. Um, and then maybe, um, maybe you can share those challenge cards, Lisa, and just give us a little visual. Uh, okay. Well, there are several. I mean, okay. see things in general. Um, I really loved Work. Let me see. This is the. We can start with the challenging with the ones I like. I really love the beach scenes. I don't know if it's because I live in Florida. And while I was working on pastoral tarot, I actually, my husband and I would actually, and my daughter would actually go to the beach on Sundays. It was like a ritual, and I loved watching people enjoying themselves and, uh, you know, just be having the ocean ambiance around me. And I think that really inspired me to want to do ocean scenes. So, the ocean scenes in the deck are among my favorite um uh, there's here's an example i know can you see yeah i love that card yeah and that was inspired by watching children building castles five of cups sand castles so what card is that is it five of cups six of cups i'm sorry seven of cups sorry sorry yeah seven of cups yeah and um then Oh, can you show that again, Lisa? I, I, I want to. Sh- I want people to see the clouds, the shapes in the clouds. Like it's all this little. Can you see? Yeah. I don't know if you can tell there, but I slipped a little fantasy in there, here and there. <laughs> well, because that's somewhere. what the card is. It's castles <laughs> in the air, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So, and I really enjoyed, you know, having all the colors. Oh, there's a lot of color in this deck. And I really enjoyed experimenting with color application, you know, how I painted. And some of it was conscious. Some of it was unconscious. A lot of the colors that came through during the process, just, they just, they, they, they glow. They illuminated for me. They, they just appeared and, and felt right. And actually, you know, the sky is an example of that, but that was very spontaneous. Actually, Yeah. She really set the mood. Oh, one thing we should mention about the deck is that if you look at it, you're not going to see the traditional pentacles flying around or or swords or or cups specifically or wands, but you're going to see some um, reference to these to the to those suit, suit numbers and everything. So here's here's a good example. So for the three of swords. There's no people here. There's no context. And I don't know if you have that card there, Lisa. I but we do. wanted to show, like, well, why are there heart? Why are there swords in this heart? What does that mean? And so, oh, God, there she has it. Um, so in this scene, we don't really show swords. I mean, there's, there's like, a little allusion to them with the sharp thorns in the background. But clearly this girl has gotten a letter that's broken her heart. She's grieving. She's alone in this desolate place. So it tells the story that this, and, that this does, but with all those, with all those, yeah. people, all that context, that mood that, that Lisa was able to create in the art. A lot of the art is very, uh, is, rich, is rich emotionally. I really wanted people to live vicariously through the characters. And for myself, I really felt the torment of this girl, the sorrow of this girl while I was painting it. Um, not that I was particularly sad that day, but I was able to put myself in that situation and um, it, and capture the essence of what she was feeling. And I thought that was important in the deck because 
it, there's a there are, there's a gamut of emotions that are illustrated, you know, all kinds of triumphs and challenges and sorrow and, and joy. And I really wanted to capture that in, in the people and, and in the environments. So um, I love it. It's, you know, uh, the thing about tarot is when you read tarot, it's, it's a story, right? We're reading absolutely. a story okay. like you're reading a book, you know, and and um, so having having things that are so visual um, and like that really connect to you, you can feel that by looking at that piece of art. Um, it's just, it makes it that much, you know, easier for the reader to be <laughs> like, oh, I know what this, you know, what this is, or, you know, to tap into that rather than, as you said, Lynn, and, and in some things, when you look at um, things that are, you know, maybe like the seven of, seven of wands that are just wands flying in the air, um, you know, we, it, that can be hard to, to figure out, right? If you haven't, you know, haven't worked that's, with that for a long time. Exactly. I want somebody who's never read tarot to be able to look at this each, each scene and know what, what it conveys as far as like what the emotion is um, here. And I, I do want to say that um, we did use right away is our reference. So, and some cards will definitely look exactly like, like, so here's the seven of pentacles and here's our seven of pentacles that's on the cover of the book. So it's pretty similar. I mean, mm -hmm. we have the zucchini blossoms as the pentacles. So there's always that visual reference, but you know, a real, a real story here and others, you know, so this is just an example of a card that, that is pretty recognizable as, as referring mm -hmm. to the right weight, but others like that three of three of swords, you know, there's going to be a little bit more interpretation. Um, I posted a couple of cards that um, I think one of the other pentacles cards, the nine of pentacles with the two hibiscus trees. And people were asking, oh, where are the pentacles? And I said, look for them. Where are they? And someone said, oh, they're hiding in plain sight. You know, they're there. You just kind of, it's kind of fun that you have to like spot that because there, there'll always be that reference. It's not going to mm -hmm. be obvious. There'll be different things like in the in the cup sometimes the pail sometimes the basket sometimes they're you know they're not like medieval chalices there's something real that works in that in that scenario so clever you're so clever <laughs> do you guys have a um do you have like one favorite card like that you both agree on like what's your oh. or maybe what is it even fair for me to ask you if you have a favorite card that's just, well, you know, today yeah. is my 19th anniversary so it's the lovers <laughs> Uh, oh, my God. That's a beautiful, wonder. great way to show us some more. The yeah. sun, the, the, the light in the sky in that card is gorgeous. Isn't it? Look at that. Happy anniversary. And that's my dog. Oh, yeah. of course. Sophie <laughs> made it in there. Oh, that's Tucker. Dog, Tucker. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. They were a source of inspiration, the deck, your dogs. Uh, and awesome. your cats, too. Lisa, do you have the, um, the Queen of Cups there? Oh, I do. That's one of my favorites because um, there we go. There we go. I was just there in September. That that scene there is a beach that I've been going to since I was a kid. It's up in, our, we have a cottage up in Massachusetts and there are rocks that we climbed as kids and now we climb as adults and we get to that, that playful place again. It's very nostalgic for me. And so I wanted, I knew that was one thing I knew I wanted for the Queen of Cups. And Lisa just nailed it. I mean, every detail in here, the birds, the the rock, the waves, just oh, thank the you. woman is clearly at peace there. It's almost meditative. You just did I, a wonderful job with that. I love how personal you guys made this and, and you know, infused your, you know, all different um, aspects into it. Um, you know, I think it just makes it even more meaningful. You know, Thanks. to have that reflected back out. Um, Lisa, will you show us share the box because the box is so beautiful and um, the presentation. It's so nice. I, it's the nicest deck I've I've ever. I mean, of my decks, this is the nicest product so far as far as production goes. It's just, I I love it. It has a little saying inside, and slides. It's just well made. It's beautiful. Oh, and yes. there's a. And it comes with a pouch. It's really That's lovely. Neat. Yeah. Awesome. Amazing. And how much does this retail for, Lynn? I think it's $31.95. Okay. 
Let's get all these extras. <clears throat> I, just want to, I just want to show you the book too. So a lot of a lot of books that um, US Games are doing has full color illustrations inside, like um, you know the actual card art. But we decided that we were going to oops that we were going to um, show the you know the black and white drawing that Lisa did. A because it, it's kind of um, you know it's kind of just old fashioned looking, but also in in these like you know pencil drawings you see a lot of details that might get lost in the color art. So I mean, like I said, it's you know it's a creamy book and it's chunky. And I think yeah, it, there's a lot there. Yeah, it, I think it, it really works because you can you kind of. <laughs> Installation for the star. That was challenging. Oh, the star card was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> Another thing. Oh, I think I mentioned that there's like a, a lot of historical background to a lot of this, and um, a couple of cards were fun to research. Like we have a um, African American cowboy, and we have an African American lighthouse keeper, because we, you know, we did the research and and showed that you know that those roles were very important historically. Like those are some of the you know, unsung heroes like the the black cowboys. There was an article in the New York Times when I was working on this about about African American uh, cowboys, and I said, okay, we have to have that. I mean, we definitely mm -hmm. wanted diversity in our deck, and we did, but we wanted it to be for. Oh, there it is! I love that card. Oh, that's and awesome! This is the idea to kind of like zoom in on it a little bit. That horse yeah. and that the rider, so of wands. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah I love. It. I really did. That was the lighting, um, just the design. I just enjoyed it. And also, I I wanted to mention for me the details and the sim and the symbols enhance the visual narrative. I tried to be really mindful of that when I was painting. Lynn gave me a lot of information to work from, and it was really important that I. Um, didn't ignore any part of the piece that everything had a certain importance within the design because it, it, it it's part of the language. It's part of the language of the art that helps deliver the message. And um, so a lot of all the flowers matter. There, is, there are birds in almost every card. Uh, the animals, they're, they, they're storytellers too. So that was an important part of the process for me is, is to have everything be relevant that i that I drew and, and painted. Well, it's an incredible accomplishment you mm -hmm. both for both of you. I mean, really, I, and I've been of course watching from my perch, like where's pastoral, you know, waiting. <laughs> I, knew, I know how <laughs> long you guys have been, have been working on this. It's, it's been for a long time, but, um, and I know, I know personally that there is like almost like a longing when the project's over, um, mm -hmm. you know, because you, you get so used to being, in that mode of creation and then you're like oh my god but you know it's the birth of your your child here right <laughs> and but so what can, i'm sorry yeah so i just curious about like what you what you're hoping the user um feels or gets from um from incorporating this card deck into their practice or into their life well i feel like <clears throat> this was created during well through many periods of our lives, but during some, you know, during COVID and a bunch of, you know, rough times. And I, I hope that this deck is soothing to people and immersive in a way that um, just brings comfort and, and peace to them. Hopefully, you know, they can connect with some of these scenes. Um, and I just hope it's a really positive experience. I mean, not every card is a happy card. There are some really rough scenes, but, you know, that's, that's part of life. That's part of tarot for sure. What about you, Lisa? Um, what was I going to say? <laughs> Can you ask the question again? Oh yeah, sure. Of course. Um, what, you know, what do you hope the users, um, the people who, who well, buy this deck or use the deck um, will be receiving? I, or? I hope it beyond the, um, the initial recognition of the image. I hope the paintings draw the draw people to explore their psyche further, to think, to have thing, to to start a narrative, to be able 
to um, see things that they wouldn't um, normally see. And it, it's my hope that it there to me, it's this is a timeless deck. There's something about it. I think it, it should resonate with everyone. It, it has uh, it has a lot of um, life lessons, and I think it's immersive. And I'm I I hope people can appreciate that. And 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 um, I don't know what else to say. I'm I'm just very proud of it. I'm very proud to have worked with Lynn. And I think it came out, you know, it came out the way we want, hoped it would come out. And to put it in context, my daughter was 11 when we started. <laughs> and she's in college now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. That does pretty good. I was a hermit for five years because I was, while well, everyone was at work or at school, I was in my studio all day. It was very solitary other than the cats. And, um, it was a way of life. It really was an integral part of my life for five years. And I did not stop. I had three pieces going on simultaneously in different stages. And I was always working on a piece. And it was really part of my life. I was um, taking jazz piano at the time, learning pieces from that time period, actually, the old standards. And um, I was reading books. I read a book um, called The Worst Hard Time by Tim Egan, which is about the Dust Bowl. So I was, it was really all immersive. And my family was on board. They posed for me oh, here. Oh, they posed for so many of these. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> the, um, it, 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 it was kind of hard to stop. When the, the project was over, I almost felt I had to reinvent myself. <laughs> Yeah, it became off. part of our identity, didn't it? It, did. it was really weird. So it's neat to see it finally in, in you know, in card form. I, it it translated great because the original paintings are uh, are about fourteen by twenty two. They're they're rather large. So I wasn't sure how they would how the reduction of the image would translate, but it came out great. I'm, I'm very pleased. How um how closely they are to the actual paintings. Um, and they didn't, I, I, I'm, I, I, I don't know what to say. Just yeah. US games. <laughs> well, I, I can, uh, I can tell you that the first time I saw it, the deck, I was like floored. I just thought it is so beautiful. And, um, and it's like I said, it's just, even though, and, and I think this is the thing, um, that we'll wrap up with, even though that period of time is over, that now starts the um, the period where it's out in the world. So I wish you guys both a, a most incredible, uh, you know, launch and best of luck uh, with with sharing this with the world. I'm really proud to know both of you and um, and to see this happening. I'll be doing everything on my end that I can to um, oh, nice. to share that uh, out there. Thank and you. I. I look forward to seeing what's up next with you two. So I have a feeling this isn't the last uh, we've seen of uh, some collaboration between uh, Lisa and Lynn. So um, thank you guys for being here thank today. Thank you so much uh, for, for chatting with us, Allison. Yeah. It's been a joy. Pleasure. Yeah. And, uh, it's fun talking with you ladies. Yeah. Great to see you, Lisa. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Toodaloo. <laughs>